Hey everyone, and welcome to another round of sound. This is the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown. I'm Bob Pompiani. Thanks for joining us tonight. Lots to get into, including Sidney Crosby, no goals in six games. What has to change there? Is anyone on this panel concerned about that? We'll also get into Pitt, five games left. How many do they have to win to win the Coastal Division, and can they do it? Number one topic tonight, however, on the number one Cochrane Sports Showdown will be football. The NFL, specifically Le'Veon Bell, will be among the topics we talk about. But here is your panel, left to right on your television screen. We have Paul Zeiss from the Pittsburgh Post-Gazette and the Paul Zeiss Show on 93.7 The Fan. In the middle, from the Fan Morning Show, Mr. Chris Mack. And to the right, Mr. Tim Benz from Trib Live and Steelers Radio Network. I want to get into first, before we do anything else, guys, I know Cincinnati uh, played tonight against Kansas City. Just to be transparent, we taped this show as that game was just starting. So if something happens with Vontez Burfecht that we may not comment about, you understand why. But what we do know is that yesterday he was slapped with another fine. This one, $112,000, brings to $415,000 the amount of fines he's had in the last six years. So, Tim Benz, look at this situation. Is that the right call with him? What should have happened for what he did last week, and not just because of last week, because of his history before last week? Well, Joe Thomas, the offensive lineman for the Cleveland Browns, raised an interesting point when he said he should have been kicked out for the entire year, and nothing he did in that game individually was suspension worthy. But in ignoring what Thomas said and doing what they did by just finding him, the NFL is basically saying recidivism doesn't matter. Uh, and they need something cataclysmic or something injury worthy to a player to suspend a guy. Uh, I don't think it was suspension worthy for the whole year, but given his history, I think he could have been suspended at least one more game, even though not one single incident merited that. Again, he's a repeat offender. And, you know, I look at what Cam Hayward said this week on the DVE morning show when he spoke on behalf of Bengal teammates used quotes from Geno Atkins at the Pro Bowl, who said, we don't even get why this guy is doing this. Now, whether Cam should have said that or not is kind of irrelevant to me. I, I'm just interested in that he said it, and that Geno Atkins is actually thinking that, apparently, as are other Bengal players, if they can't control him, and he doesn't care about what his own teammates think, and this guy's a loose cannon and needs to be sat down extensively. Well, they need to do something to get through to him at this point because nothing money has do it to this point. Well, that falls on the coach, doesn't do it? It falls on a coach. It, well, no, he it falls on the coach. turn it, a blind eye. It falls on the league to do something about this at this point because in 15, 20 years, if I'm one of the people that had to play Vontez Perfect on a regular basis and I've got a case of CTE or I can't remember some things, guess what? I'm more than happy, as lots of former players have done, to sue the league and see what happens then in a court. Because at this point, the league is responsible for allowing Vontez Perfect to continue to go out on a football field. They need to create a path to Vontez Perfect either learning how to play the game correctly or working his way out of the league. It starts with one big suspension right now. I realize neither of those or multiple events this past weekend were necessarily suspension worthy. But with the track record he has, the history of suspensions he has, Give him one big fat suspension right now, eight games. Say the next one is 16, and the one after that, you're out of the league because you can't learn how to play football. I just want, I mean, how many more times is this guy going to be doing this kind of thing before the, the league gets the message? Look, it's amazing that we're saying this given their track record, but the NFL should take a page for the, from the NHL, uh, who suspended Tom Wilson for 20 games. You know what? 20 games sounds good to me. I give that to uh, a perfect 20 games. Guess what? If he sits out for 20 games, it's a lot of game checks. He might get the message. To me, he's out there. He's trying to hurt somebody. It's clear he's trying to hurt somebody. And I guarantee if, if you talk to every player in the league, nobody would shed a tear if this guy was out of the league. I want to talk about Le'Veon Bell now because it's one of the topics that continues to keep on giving if you're in sports talk <laughs> every day. People <laughs> worry about, when's right. he going to be here, will he be? I'm going to change a little bit on you guys. Chris Mack, I'll start with you on this one. By the time the playoffs roll around, if the Steelers are in it, we expect that they will be. Who will be your starting running back for week one of the playoffs? Uh, if Le'Veon Bell comes back, I now, suspect... If he, this is assuming he is back. Assuming he is back, I think it would be Le'Veon Bell would be your first down starter in a playoff game at that point because at that point we would safely assume that he's worked his way back to 110% game shape, whatever you want to call that. But make no mistake, when he does come back, if, and that's still a huge if because I don't believe anything that comes out of this guy's camp or out of his mouth at this point, nothing he says or does can be trusted in my book. Uh, James Conner's your guy for right now. And you slowly, very slowly work late 
Le'Veon Bell back into the mix and let him prove that he deserves to be in the mix with James Conner, who, to be honest, is putting up Le'Veon Bell numbers this year. Given the uh, injury history of Bell and Connor, Stephen Ridley probably is going to be the starting <laughs> running back for the first playoff game. If you really it's want to Jalen Samuels time. Positive. Here we go. <laughs> You're Jalen Samuels. Um, no, seriously, if, if they're both healthy, which again is a big if given their histories, I think by that point, Le'Veon Bell would have won the job and will be the starter, but I don't know that he'll be the guy that gets 25 carries or 30 carries like he has. I think that, you know, they'll, they'll, they'll split him a little bit. He'll get the bulk of the carries, but he won't get all of them. Yeah, I think the reason why these guys are right here, Bob, and I agree with them, is that human nature is going to take over. And if Le'Veon Bell is there, they're going to default, and by they, I mean Randy Feetner and Mike Tomlin are going to default what they, to what they know and trust. Uh, for as great as James Conner has been, uh, even better than what I thought he could be, and I thought they didn't use him enough last year when they could have spelled Le'Veon Bell a little bit, as great as he has been, I think you look at games against the Chiefs and the Ravens as indications that they didn't completely trust him at that point to use him in the second half at what at the time were still close games. Field goal going to the fourth quarter for the Ravens, 28-28 after he scored against the Chiefs, and then they kind of forgot about him. They never would have done that if Le'Veon Bell had been there back. Now, I think that Connor over the last two weeks has started to change that narrative some, but if he's there and able to be used and in shape, I think they will default back to using their all-pro in the playoffs. All right, we'll find out. Perhaps he'll show up tomorrow, perhaps not. <laughs> Art Rooney told the NFL Network that regardless, they're not going to trade him. He will be on this roster the rest of the season once he shows up. We have more coming up. We'll talk about some of the things that happened in the NFL, including a controversial two-point conversion. But first, I want to tell you about, you know, there are a lot of big games coming up this week, but only one big event, and that is going on right now. Number one, Cochrane Toyota. You can get big-time offers on all your favorite Toyota models, like $3,000 cash back on 2018 RAV4s and $1,000 back on 2018 Camrys. The big event also brings you really small lease payments. Real small. Check them out. Number one, Cochrane Toyota. Route 30 North Huntington or visit CochraneToyota.com. More NFL talk when we come back. Number One Cochrane Sports Showdown is brought to you by Number One Cochrane. Go one better. And by Highmark Blue Cross Blue Shield. Have a greater hand in your health. 